All right, I'm back, and as you can see, the moon is rising, so I need to quickly get into position here so I can do the the burn towards the moon, and I have decided rather riskily to keep these three uh, second stage rockets on there, so I'm going to use that as my initial push. Let me actually turn off my RCS. I accidentally left that on. Uh, as you can see, this is where we're at. Uh, there goes that orbit. Very nice. There goes the fuel. Almost the same exact as last time. Get rid of that. Very nice. That worked out well. <laughs> Alright. I'm going to throttle down a little bit because this is going to happen really quick. All right, come on. You can do it. Past five million meters, six million, seven, eight, nine, and ten. I believe it's at eleven. Engine's off. Okay. Magnificent. Uh, and we are a little bit offline right there, but... Uh, I think that should be good enough to get us into lunar orbit. I'm not sure how specific their physics are. Uh, uh, maybe I'll have to do a little bit of experimentation to see if I can modify that a little bit. Um, yeah, right now I am past the periapis. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, let's... Uh, there's our guys heading to the moon. Well done, well done. <laughs> Come on, Bill and Bob, you should be excited. You're going to be the first people of your species, whatever you green little globs are, to orbit the moon. We've got plenty of RCS fuel, plenty of fuel fuel. Maybe just for little minor modifications, that should be all we need. But I'm also hoping <laughs> that by the time I get out there, the moon also gets out there. So... Um, I'm wondering if I should do anything about this slight off-kilter orbit. Um, I don't know why I'm drifting like that. Why am I drifting like that? I have my SAS on. Interesting. Why am I drifting? Okay, that was weird. <laughs> Suddenly my rotation stopped. A little bit concerning. We had a little bit of a technical fault. They had to restart the computers, but we're back. I don't know why those numbers are jiggling around like that, but we're back and on our way to the moon, which looks a little bit like the Death Star right now, but uh, I wonder what can I do to kind of modify that a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna wait till I get maybe around here and then I'm gonna fire kind of downward and I think that should do the trick but I'm not gonna go too crazy. I think that's probably good enough what I've got right there. Uh, so yeah, I'll be I'll be back when I start to make stupid decisions like that. <laughs> All right, I'm back and... Such a majestic moment here for the Kerman brothers. Um, uh, I am going to attempt. Uh, I'm about, where am I? A little over a million and a quarter meters away. I'm going to point south and then uh, we'll see if that can give us a little bit better of a trajectory the trajectory, <laughs> sound it out, trajectory to bring this down so I'm kind of in more plane, in plane with the with the lunar orbit. Uh, so first I need to calculate exactly which way is south. Um, let's see. All right, that's the 90 degree. Let me turn on my RCS so I can do this a little bit easier. All right, very nice. Now what I did is I, instead of putting four RCS thrusters on each side, I actually put three, and I can already tell that that kind of affects uh, 
the ease at which whoa, at which I uh, I'm traveling here. Okay, let me get back to here. All right, very nice. Okay, this is the direction I'm heading uh, towards the moon, <laughs> naturally. So what I want to do is, gosh, get myself out of disorientation here. Okay, I want to point basically down. So I believe over here. So let's test that theory out. I'm going to turn off the SAS. Uh, yeah, basically... Uh, 90 degrees away from where I currently am. Which should be... Oh lord. Uh, no, that's not right. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Keep an eye on the RCS fuel. Oh, everybody's screaming at the monitors. No, what are you doing? All right, easy there, Spinny. All right, I was, all right, I'm heading in that direction. And I'm at, where am I at? Um, positive 50 and on the 90 degree line. So I should go negative 50 and on the 180 degree line, right? Right, right? <laughs> I, I don't know anything about flight or things like that. So yeah. Yeah, that looks about right because the rocket is kind of orientating itself properly. Stop spinning, thank you. Actually, it should be neg a negative 20. Ah, uh, because that just makes sense. Wow, this, yeah, okay. Note to self, future rocket designs, put all four RCS units, because this is a little bit difficult to control. All right, and right there, right there, right there, yes, okay. Very nice. All right, now I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Um, oh God, I hope I did that right. I'm just gonna burn very, very lightly. I'm gonna see if that does anything to the way this this blue uh, trajectory is pointing, so. Yeah, it does. Awesome. And stop. All right, uh, it unfortunately also shrunk my orbit, which isn't the best thing in the world. <laughs> um, but theoretically, that should work. I think I'm close enough there. The moon is 11400. Okay, so yeah, I get really close to the moon there. Uh, what this might put me in is a kind of a figure eight uh, orbit around the moon. Uh, so, so yeah, okay, well we, Probably learned how to do that. I think I did the math wrong, and I was kind of probably what I should have done was uh, just faced uh, right on the horizon mark instead of that negative 20 is probably what slowed me down a little bit. Yeah, that looks better just because I'm more straight vertical there. Oh well, um, I think we're fine as far as our orbit goes. I could burn a little bit now to make this reach a little further. Uh, let me do a little bit of that. Uh, <laughs> I really should look into these things before I start pushing buttons. Uh, so It might move us a little bit further along, but uh, hopefully that's not too much of a problem. Oh my god, yeah, these poor, poor decision on only three RCS thrusters. Right there, right there, right there, okay. Let me just do this, and X, and this, and X. Okay, perfect. All right, we're right on the mark there. 11,366, and the moon is 11,400. So that is cool. So let me 
Head back to our brave spacecraft. God, Bill and Bob, settle down. Have have some Ritalin or something. Um, <laughs> actually, Jebediah is probably the one who needs Ritalin. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, okay. We're on our way to the moon, guys. Uh, hooray, hopefully this works out. Uh, I think I'm going to be fast-forwarding this part because it is a little bit on the boring side. So uh, I'll, I'll be fast-forwarding and I will rejoin you when I'm closer to the moon. <laughs> All right, I just wanted to cut in really quick to first of all show you that uh, we're further than we've ever been before, but I'm fast forwarding at 100 times right now, and this looks like this is going to sync up properly. Uh, as you can see, the moon is slowly moving across here, and I am slowly getting closer past 6,000 kilometers. I did that conversion in my head all by myself, and uh, yeah, the moon is getting closer. Let me actually go back down to one real time. And, and join the spacecraft and actually take a look at the moon from this distance because wow look at the planet Kerbin so far away and now let's turn around and look at our destination oh we're gonna make it uh, I'm not entirely sure what all these different camera okay there we go that looks a little bit better hooray huzzah and etc so yeah let me Keep fast forwarding here, and we'll see what happens. All right, back with the onboard camera here. Very dramatic, getting much closer to the moon. Uh, what I do want to do, however, as you can see, uh, I'm getting quite close. I think we're going to sync up just perfectly. Uh, I do want to flip my spacecraft around to be heading in the way, the opposite direction I'm actually traveling. Uh, simply because I would I need to slow down so I don't just slingshot right past the moon uh, So whoa hello speaking of slingshots uh, So let's check that out nice easy roll there very nice and Where there it is yeah, see I didn't even that wasn't a roll uh, having only three when I'm just pushing A or yeah A and D to turn left and right it actually puts me into a spin so uh, f for future rocket design God stop it stop it stop easy 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 tap 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 yeah I wish uh, I don't know maybe they'll have uh, either joystick or controller support where you can have more analog controls over these thrusters because it's either 100% or nothing because you're using a keyboard so Easy, and hold right there. That's close enough. All right, so we're back. I'm gonna just slowly fast forward because I don't know what exactly happens here. Five times, might need to do more than that. 10 times, okay. Perhaps 50, yeah, okay. I'm gonna keep a very close, watchful eye on the situation as we get closer to the moon. M-U-N, moon. Oh, oh, what just happened there? Okay, um, what? That, that was a little disorienting. Hold on, what? <laughs> I was, I, I'm obviously I'm gonna show you that, but uh, I was traveling in this direction. Uh, just doesn't make sense. Then all of a sudden, as a snap of the fingers, I my, my orbit changed. Um, I'm not sure if that's correct with the physics per se. Um, it seems like there's two separate phases. There's when you're in uh, the orbit of Kerbin, and then once you cross or get so close to the moon, it suddenly switches you over to a different physics engine, and suddenly I'm going in an opposite direction here. Um, and now my velocity, as you can see, my velocity was dropping because I was getting further away and in my slower part of the orbit. 
Uh, now my velocity is pretty much pegged at 450. So uh, yeah, and the altitude changes. So that's a little bit jarring and unnerving to suddenly, okay, suddenly you're in moon orbit. Um, but I, I don't know if there's no other way they could do it to make sense, but uh, I, I guess we'll just have to deal with it. Uh, once again, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm assuming I'll have to do my burn at the periapsis. <sighs> Can't say that still. The periapsis uh, to bring whatever this oblong orbit is in uh, down to, to the moon. Because I don't think... Yeah, now my positioning is all whacked up. One time, okay, I'm going to just do a little bit of a test retro burn to see what that does, uh, but I'm pretty sure I'll have to wait. No, nope, that's not the direction I want to be heading. Let's just take a quick view. Hello, moon. It's quite large there. And once again, don't set up your rocket with only three RCS thrusters per side. And hold that. Uh, let's just move a little bit down. Okay. All right. Let's just turn on the engine very slightly to see what this does. Uh, probably not what I want it to. All right, I'm going to stop doing that just because I'm a little bit worried <laughs> that I'm going to totally balls up and end up traveling into the cosmos. Uh, so yeah, let's see what happens uh, when I wait till I get closer to the periapsis. All right, I'm back closer to the moon than we've ever been before. I'm positioning myself for our moonar orbit entry burn. Trying to get right on the line there and hold it. Very nice, very nice. Uh, we're getting close to the periapsis. So let me just fast forward a little bit till I get a little bit closer and then we're both going to experience getting into orbit around the moon. Hopefully. <laughs> Fingers crossed. That's the motto of this mission. Fingers crossed.